Death Be Not Proud is one of John Donne's holy sonnets. You'll note that um, it's a 14 line poem. It has uh, an eight line octave and a six line sestet. And I've indicated there where the, the break is. And the reason I've done that is because we'll see that there is a tonal shift between the octave and sestet, which is very common with his, um, his holy sonnets. Now, this poem um, is part of his metaphysical poetry, and it attempts to solve the unanswerable questions concerning life, death, and eternal salvation. It's an exercise in wit, and W-I-T, wit, uh, which, is, which means it's an intellectual exercise constructed around a conceit. And a conceit um, is where you try and pair two objects together, and they seemingly contradict each other, and the poem seeks to make them um, work together by the end of it. So Dunn's poems are a, um, an intellectual puzzle. They're very tightly constructed um, and, and uh, you know, a demonstration of his absolute intelligence. Um, in this case, the conceit is that death has been personified. So death is alive. And uh, he's, that's what he's building his... Um, his whole concept around. Now in this poem, Dunn adopts a dramatic voice and he does this to mask his insecurities about his own death. And the Renaissance era had challenged the Christian views of salvation. Um, and at this point, you know, the Renaissance era was um, uh, exploring science and this clashed with uh, religion's views concerning uh, life and death. And though Dunn was a Christian and he had a heavy um, sort of uh, role in the in the Christian Church, Church of England, um, he had no absolute proof about what happens after death, and thus he was uncertain. It, it caused a bit of doubt for him, and hence the poems. The poems are uh, were not meant for publication, and he wrote them as a means of um, pacifying himself so that he felt better about uh, his impending death. So in the octave, he mocks death. As in most of his sonnets, um, they demonstrate an aggressive tone. And his dramatic voice often creates a sense of melodrama because he's feeling insecure. And despite his heavy involvement in the church, he is preoccupied with his own sin. And he's concerned that his sins Will not be pardoned when he dies. So it is um, blown out of proportion um, because he feels as though his sins will, he will not be worthy of um, God and it, it life eternal. Um, you know, but that's quite, you know, ridiculous really when you compare it with, um, you know, the actions of murderers and things. And that's what he's talking about in the poem. So if we start to have a look, um, death be not proud, for some have called me the mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. So here he is beginning um, by um, mocking death and saying, why are you so proud? You know, people are worried about you, but you're not. You're not uh, mighty and dreadful. For those whom th thou thinkest thou dost overthrow, die not, poor death nor yet canst thou kill me. So here he's saying, I, I am um, a Christian and I believe in eternal salvation and life eternal, um, so you cannot kill me. So from sleep and rest, which but thy pictures be, so when we die, we just seem to look like we're, we're um, dead, uh, and he, you gain much pleasure and from thee much more must flow, and soon as our best men with thee do go, rest of their bones and souls delivery. So really he's saying here that that um, everyone is, um, is subject to old age and death, that is a real social leveller, and that at some stage um, <clears throat> we all die, and our bones will rest in the earth, and our souls will be delivered to heaven. So here, oh, I forgot to talk about the um, the notion of sleep being a uh, a metaphor in the Renaissance times for death. So 
we you know he's basically saying when we die uh, we appear to we have the appearance of death but really um, it's just a, a period wherein we're waiting for our souls to be claimed by God and um, you know and taken to heaven so the the start here he's he's really attacking death and um and then we see when we get to the to the um the volta of the poem he takes pity on death and he 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 realizes that death is powerless as a result you know so he has his insecurities about um his own death he's worried that that he he will not achieve salvation because he's a sinner but he always um submits in the sestet he gives over uh, that intellectual concern um, so he moves from the head into the heart so he he resumes his faith in god um, and and therefore he takes pity on death and he says thou art slave to fate chance kings and desperate men so these are you are you know you only um are able to claim the death of people due to the actions of fate Hence, the actions of kings, you know, setting off and causing wars and beheadings and things like that. And, you know, you hang around desperate uh, people, you know, and um, and therefore you're just responding to them. You don't initiate it. So you are powerless. And he says, and you do with poison, war and sickness dwell. So this is your preoccupation. You have to hang around all these things and poppy. So um uh you know drugs and charms that can make us sleep as well and and better than thy stroke why swell'st thou then so here we've got this rhetorical question where he's challenging death and say why are you so proud you know you don't you don't have any reason to be because you're you're powerless and then we have in the the last two lines of the poem uh this couplet we have the um the, the essence of the poem and he says one short sleep past we wake eternally so this comes back to this notion of sleep and he's saying that um, you know death is a passageway to eternal life so it's a short period where um, you know we die and then um, we we uh, achieve eternal salvation and so one short sleep past we wake eternally and death shall be no more. So here he's saying that we will no longer be be dead. We will live eternally. And then we have a semicolon here, and it's uh, and then death thou shalt die. So here we've got this strong statement from Dunn saying, I I disempower you, death, and and I give myself over to God and that belief in eternal salvation. So he's feeling a lot better about. Um, you know his his uh, next stage in in his life because he's reaffirmed his commitment to God.